Madam, would you begin to see the cases tonight? The first one is CU 2016-05, Georgia Beer Company. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a conditional use request um, for two different uses. One is a microbrewery facility, um, and the other one is the event center. Um, these are in CC zoning. But the property is located at 109 South Briggs Street. It consists of 0.41 acres. Back on the screen shows the zoning pattern of the area, the commercial corridor along the south side of West Hill Avenue as you come into the downtown area from the west. And the aerial shows the subject property with the existing rooftop of the existing building, which is the old city of Aldosta Waterworks building, which has been vacant since about 1991. Um, immediately to the east of that, you see the large roof that is the downtown fire station or station number one. And then the upper right hand corner is the city municipal court. And then the parking areas to the west of Bridge Street, those are city owned public parking lots. The applicant is proposing to renovate this building into a microbrewery with an event center built within. The proposed site plan is to eventually acquire this property from the city by way of the development authority. You see the existing building, um, the main building there in the center, um, the existing storage building that's to the north that is to remain. Um, and they're not proposing any expansions. It's all interior renovations and adaptive reuse of what is inside. Um, they will utilize the public parking around it as the parking for their facility, um, with the exception of the few spaces of the public parking lot that face the building. Those, I think, will be their primary use uh, for themselves. Uh, floor plan is in your packet, but also on the screen. The building is basically in four quadrants. The upper left quadrant, which is the entrance, um, that is also the event space. The rest of it is the brewery itself, including the brewery operations and storage. And then building elevations, you see it's a beautiful old brick building. It's in remarkably good shape considering its age. Um, and we would like to respect that and then fix it back up um, like it is, was many years ago um, to a restore historic building. Um, two different sets of elevations and four different sides of the building. Um, we talked about this at length at the work session. Microbreweries, you may recall from a couple of years ago, was something we added to our use table. It is not a full-scale industrial brewery like Anheuser-Busch. This is something much smaller. Uh, they are limited by state law and actually regulated by state law. Their maximum production does not exceed 15,000 barrels a year, um, which is not a whole lot, but that's something for them to grow into. Um, and the other thing that is currently in the state law is they cannot sell their product from the premises. Our law must go through a Georgia licensed distributor and then sold that way. Um, so the only thing they can offer is part of the event center function is to have tours of the facility. So usually very interesting and informative. And they can offer very small samples to the touring guests. Um, but that purpose really the tours is to promote their product people would need to go buy elsewhere. Um, it makes a very nice venue for a variety of functions um, and sort of showcase, uh, uh, I guess, the growing industry of craft beer and brewery. Um, uh, staff finds this consistent with the conference of plan and conditional use review criteria, which are there in your packet, and we're recommending approval of two conditions. The first one is approval shall be granted for a microbrewery and event center facility utilize the historic building and surrounding grounds and shall utilize adjacent or nearby public parking to assist with its usage demands. The event center use of the property shall only be in conjunction with the on-site microbrewery. In other words, the two uses go together. Second, conditional use approval shall expire after three years from the date of approval if no plans for building permit have been submitted by that time. Here we talked about this at length with the work session. I'm glad to answer any further questions you might have. Any questions for staff? We're being a... Oh, Chris, Paul, I'm sorry. Do they plan to be open on the third and fourth Mondays at 8 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> they might. Um, the applicants are here, and they can certainly entertain detailed questions. <laughs> any other questions for staff? They're being a... Anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. State your name and your address for the record, please, sir. Good evening. I'm Trapp, and I'm on the board for you. My name is Chris Jones, and my uh, address is 
977 Northeast Shrine Club Road in Madison. This is my business partner. Uh, my name is Jack Martin. I'm 4963 Sandy Hill Drive in Dallas. And we just wanted to um, thank you for considering our uh, regional proposal and make ourselves available to the commission for any questions that you might have. Uh, Chris, is there, so do you have experience in this or is this a new picture? Just curious. Uh, for me personally, this is, this is a new picture. How many barrels a year did you was a maximum? The maximum under state law, what I said, I checked, is 15,000 barrels. That's the maximum. Maximum. How many gallons? Uh, well, 15,000 times 55, I think. Uh, 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 30, 31 gallons is a, is a barrel. Yeah. Put that in perspective on our tin barrel system. We'll brew anywhere between three and 5,000 barrels a year as opposed to 15,000. Any other questions, Commissioner Hall? Uh, Y'all cannot sell your own brewery, your own beer there by law, except through another supplier. Yes, sir, that's regulated by state statutes. So are y'all going to be offering, offering other beers uh, also, or is it just going to be your beers? It will just be our product, mm -hmm. and that will be sampled by uh, the community who takes tours of property, uh, and it's governed by a recent um, Department of Revenue bulletin that really outlined the uh, Bill 63 is kind of put more regulations on So y'all won't be just open to sell beer, y'all have a guest beer kind of tasting, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. They'll right. be very just the times that will be open, but we won't necessarily be part of the max in the Oh, okay. That's a, that's a direct question with that then, Jack. So going forward, do you have any plans to open and extend alongside to any can you do a standalone site and sell this matter? Just curious. They, as I understand, say all they have to completely isolate the manufacturing. I know, but they, they do a standalone building. Can they sell their product there? Um, not on the same premises. No, no, no. Standalone off premises. Can they do like, yes. like they're running a building downtown? Well, they can. A distributor can. A distributor. Can. We we actually can't. As well, yeah, I just I just I didn't know. I know last week we talked about they couldn't on site, but I thought I heard last week that you could do something on site. Only what we talked about last week was a different use, which is a brew pub. Yes. Which you have a restaurant and microbrewery That's combination. Correct. That's correct. Where they can only sell that on those premises. It cannot be sold off site. Three tier system that's in the building. There's no one single thing you can own. Manufacturers uh, distribution. Distribution and retail. Huh. So they're all two separate. Never on two. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions for presenters? Mr. Colton? Not necessarily for Matt. Does anything in the conditioning of this or the permit itself um, hinder them should state law change in regard to what we're just talking about? Um, there is nothing that would hinder them unless we put the limit on there. Um, I mean, it's something I did think about, but given the zoning pattern, I mean, this is a very intensive commercial area, so most any commercial uses are already allowed there. So if a retail facility were to go next door or in this property in place of, that would be fine. Um, it's more of the manufacturing component. And so microbreweries, which are defined both in state law and local ordinance, are they cap. Um, so even if the state law were to change, we still have the local ordinance cap. Um, so that would eventually limit it long term. But as like we talked about the work session at Florida Microbrewery in Savannah, which is one that I think they're planning to model after, uh, which is also below that 15,000 foot cap, and it's a little larger facility than what they're contemplating currently. Um, but they also have room to grow. And, well, yeah, and, and as long as it resembles that kind of use, I think it fits in very well here. Um, in some commercial areas, I would not think that, but here I think it works well, and hence the conditional use process. On your, um, on your first uh, condition, on your recommendation, the last sentence of that, what, what is the purpose of that? That is, so the event center, which is only about one-fourth of this building, about 1,200 square feet, uh, remains in conjunction with the microbrewery. So in other words, if the brewery were to move out, this building does not become a 100% event center. Um, to me, that's a whole different kind of review, uh, different impacts, particularly when it's a large quantity of public parking that's involved. The use that they're proposing does not have a very high parking demand, 
uh, with the event space being as small as it is. So the intent is to keep the uses together, and if they want to separate in the future, then it's another review process. If I may, when my wife asked me what that line meant, I used the uh, comparison that we, we couldn't rent out that portion of the building for a, a wrestling event, for instance. Um, and, and, and use the event space for that. that. It had to be directly correlated to our business, which is the production of play practice. Well, and that, I mean, that, that's actually my thought is you're a, you're a new business and you're starting out. And, you know, does this limit your ability to maybe make some revenue off of a 1,200 square foot area in your building? The only um, other usage besides the touring aspect during the Zooming hours that we've considered would be such things as private events, such as a, a rehearsal dinner or, or a, wedding, a wedding reception, which in and in of itself would be tailored directly around the, the brewery. Okay. Are y'all going to have any kitchen facilities or would they have to be catered? It would, it would have to be catered. State law would prohibit us from having any type of kitchen facility inside. Any questions, Mr. I applaud y'all for using this building. I'm very glad to see that it's not going to go to waste. It's a beautiful building. Thank you. Any other questions for our presenters? Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Is anyone here wishing to speak against this request? Anyone here wishing to speak against this request on form? There being none, commissioners, any discussion on this request? There being none, uh, this time I will take a motion on this request. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Wilson. I make a motion we recommend approval to the City Council. I have a motion for approval, so, Mr. Willis, by the second Commissioner Bolson. Any discussion on this? Is that with the conditions, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes. Mr. Willis, please raise his hand. Yes. Say with conditions. Yes. I knew what that meant. Uh, no further discussions at this time. All in favor, sit down, raise your right hand. That's 7 0, Ms. Carpell. That's unanimous. Matt, the next case this evening is VA 2016 16 Brown Development. Yes, sir. Here. This is a rezoning request for 7.42 acres um, to community commercial. Um, if you look on the back on the screen, it's also in your packet. It's that the rectangular area in the center is currently split zone between highway commercial and RM. The highway commercial portion is about six acres. The RM portion is 1.42 acres. Uh, the CH is a down zoning to CC. The RM would be an up zoning to CC. Um, the purpose is to create a development plan here that it combines with office and commercial as well as multifamily. Uh, we talked about at the work session, multifamily is not allowed in CH, it is allowed in RM, uh, but it is also allowed in CC, hence the request for CC zone. Um, this is the former Elks Lodge property way out at the east end, excuse me, the west end of Atri Road. This is an area from several years ago. You can see the rooftop of the Elks Lodge building. Um, it used to encompass this property and the property to the north. Uh, back in 2009, the property to the north was rezoned from RP to C, excuse me, to RM to allow for the Grove Apartments. Uh, they also had a little dog leg to that rezoning request, which is the RM portion of the subject property. The purpose of that back in 2009 was to allow the possibility of the apartment complex having a main entryway from Bay Tree Road. Um, they were able to avoid that and pull their entrance to strip the off of the Bay Tree Road extension, which is sort of like a frontage road along I-75. Um, I do not have a more recent aerial for you, um, but if you drive up down I-75, you can't miss the apartments that are there. <laughs> um, the site plan in your packet is very, very conceptual, I underscore the word conceptual. This is simply a, a demonstration to show how a mixture of retail and multifamily residential uses might cohabitate there in an effort also to generate some numbers. Uh, what this site plan is showing you is 24 four-bedroom apartments combined with about 34,000 square feet of office and retail space. And you can see there's room for a little bit more. Um, what the applicants really are wanting to pursue is a planned development proposal that they may come back to you at a later date where they blend the site plan a little more creatively and effectively with a mixture of these uses. The staff certainly encourages them to do that. What they're interested in currently is getting the zoning in place. Remember our plan development process uses the underlying zoning 
to dictate the uses and the densities. So without the CC zoning in place, they would not be able to do the level of multifamily that they would like. Uh, so hence the site plan, just to give you some ideas of the scale and the numbers. Um, Zoning-wise, this area is dominated by commercial zoning, mainly to the south of Atree Road, that is the back side of the Drury development. Um, if you look at the polygons there, the road that separates the hotel from the Olive Garden restaurant, um, pursuant to Drury's master plan, is proposed, actually required by variance approval, to extend all the way to Bay Tree Road. Um, so there will be an entrance off of Bay Tree for that development. The applicants are desiring to coordinate with them, <coughs> and share the entrance points on Bay Tree, and work together on both sides of the road. Um, to the north, of course, is established multifamily. There is single family zoning to the north and west. So this is sort of in that transition zone area between commercial to the south, residential to the north. Comprehensive plan-wise, character area, this is community activity center which is the intensive uh, designation of the area around about Austin Mall. Uh, it points along St. Augustine Road. It is not quite as intensive as the Regional Activity Center, which is all the interchange and high density uses. But commercial zoning is certainly appropriate in community activities. Um, staff found all of this consistent with the comprehensive plan. Our standards for exercise of zoning power, which are there in your packet, and we are recommending approval. Richard, any questions for staff? I've got one. Uh, Matt, what, where do we stand on the flyover? I know it's been on a back burner or done away with or whatever, but is that taken into consideration here? Would it affect it? Do we need to consider? It could possibly it? affect it when, if it were to come into play. Yeah. We've also discussed alternatives, um, which in our discussions with the applicant was an underpass under I-75 instead of an over. I uh, know going over the interstate, it is an engineering nightmare with slopes on the west side. Um, going under the interstate makes it a little bit easier, but either of those would have to be coordinated with Georgia DOT when they finally get around to rebuilding exit 18. Right. Um, well, I knew it was supposed to tie into James Flyover and kind of tie into James Road around there because way back when, when that subdivision went in there, that was all. And it's been talked about for a number of years. Um, the only thing that would really affect them is the extreme southern edge of their property. They might need to reserve some land for future right-of-way, um, but the bulk of the land would not be affected by it, um, other than possibly visually. Um, underpass would be my personal preference. I think engineering-wise it works um, long-term, a little better. Um, then you eliminate the visual. Uh, this would be an on-ramp I-75 from Bay Tree Road going north. And so the corner of the property would be affected potentially. <coughs> that's it. Do we need to do anything with that? That is all going to be taken care of during the review process. Uh, um, when they come through with their plan development proposal, depending on the, their design, we might get into some discussion about it then. But it so won't affect us. So won't be it does that. not affect the zoning case. Okay. All right. One more. What about Oak Street or Bay Tree there? Is there any? thing in the city right now working to, to repave that or widen that because it's becoming a nightmare coming out of the apartment complex. I, knew, I know it has moved up the priority list for paving because the pavement that is there is not in very good shape. Um, surprisingly, that segment of Bay Tree west of Morto is a local road, not like the rest of Bay Tree. Um, and the main that? reason is because it doesn't really go anywhere. It dead ends at the interstate. One thing that has changed in the past five or six years is the traffic has gone up because of the apartments. Well, somebody needs to do a traffic count on that. So and we change that. Correct. Hence the additional wear and tear on Bay Tree, and hence it's moving up the ladder of priorities. Um, I don't think the traffic demand is to the point it needs to be four lane, uh, but certainly improved to be a better two lane road. Yeah, you can you can wipe the two lane road side by putting that two feet on each side. And you and drainage becomes an issue with that too. <coughs> I never <coughs> finished my supper. Everybody knows anyone here tonight wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Jimmy Cone. I'm the architect on the project. My address is 1806 Plum Street here in Valdosta. Also in attendance with me is Matt Phelps, who is the uh, civil engineer working with us on this project. And we're here on behalf of the owner to answer any questions that y'all have about this project. I'm 
MR to CC zoning to the county, I mean to the city commission. I'm sorry. I'll second. So we have a motion from Mr. Colson, second Commissioner Wild. Any discussion on the motion? I'd, I'd like to ask that one thing that we could put in there be added <clears throat> that you have downward and directional lighting away from the, the neighborhood there. That's one of the requests I have in the form. And that's already a code requirement. It's a code, it's a code requirement. requirement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Strike that now. Yeah. Go with your motion. Yeah. Okay. You didn't, when you want to do a condition, you got to go like this now. <laughs> okay. So, no further discussion on that at this time. All in favor, please say by raising your right hand. That's unanimous, Mr. Carmella. Next item is Matt is 